This video is sponsored by no one. Make sure to use my code for no one in the video description below to get 20% off your next adventure with no one. That was easy. In theoretical computer science, it's always important to understand the computational power of various models. In the class, we usually talk about things called deterministic finite automata, and then later we talk about things called Turing machines, and we discovered that Turing machines are far more powerful than DFAs are, because DFAs can only do a certain number of things, while Turing machines can do a lot more. The main reason why Turing machines are a lot more powerful than DFAs is that they have some additional capabilities that DFAs don't have. The problem is that there are more than one thing that Turing machines can do more than DFAs can, and what we want to understand is what are the actual reasons why Turing machines are more powerful than DFAs. So let's briefly go over the reasons why Turing machines are more powerful than DFAs. The main reasons are that Turing machines can both read and write as well as move right and left and additionally can acquire new memory. Whereas DFAs on the other hand can only move right. And because they only move right, it doesn't actually make sense to overwrite previous values because you can't look at previous data. There's no reason to give this model an ability to write over previous data and you cannot acquire new memory. So the main question is, we have these three different abilities that a Turing machine can do that a DFA can't. So is it that all of these three have to work in conjunction with each other or is it that we can only look at, say, this one, and that will give the power that is needed for a Turing machine, whereas the other two are completely redundant? Or is it that maybe these two have to go together and this one's redundant, or is it something else entirely? So let's take a look at this. So what I've made here is essentially a truth table of what the tape head can do. So DFAs don't really have a tape head, but the idea of where you can look at the actual input so I have a bunch of them, four here, that are gonna be right only, and then four that are left and right, so you can move left and right. And then capabilities about being able to read and write new values into cells. So I've read only for some of them and read writes for others. And the ability to acquire new memory, I have yes for some and no for others. And you can see that we have two choices here, two choices here, and two choices here. And so overall, we have eight different possibilities of what the model can actually be. So what we want to do is in this column to actually put what types of languages those kinds of machines can recognize and try to understand what the power of each is. Do we need all three of these to work in conjunction to get equivalent power of Turing machines? Or is there some kind of hierarchy along the way? Or is it that most of them are regular and then only like one of them is Turing machine? We need to understand why. So let's take a look at these. Well, if we have a machine that only moves right, then there's no point in its ability to be able to write W-R-I-T-E, not R-I-G-H-T, to be able to W-R-I-T-E values in its previous cells. So the fact that we have a write-only machine that does a read and a write is completely useless. And then on the ability to acquire new memory, let's think about what that means. Well, if we have an input right here, so we have some tape of some kind, and the input is right here. So acquiring new memory will involve taking some of these cells over here. So we have the input string here, and then looking at new cells over here. But if we think about this, if the machine's only moving right, then once we hit here, then it's gonna continue on forever in this way. So therefore, once we have reached here, we can either say we're going to have the machine stop or we're going to have the machine run forever, in which case we know exactly what its behavior is going to be because all of the acquired new memory is always going to be blank. And we can also change the question here about what the actual memory is going to be, whether they're actually some kind of special cell like a blank symbol or something from the actual input or tape alphabet, whatever that means. So, But in either case, you can show that all of these are regular. So this one's regular, this one's regular, I'm just gonna abbreviate it. So regular in all four of these because the machine moves right only. So now let's think about when the machine can move left and right because that will actually start to change things. Well, if we move left, let's look at this one. So we can only read cells. We can't actually change any of the values in there, but we can move left and right. And we can acquire new memory if we want to. But the thing is, if we can only read, once we get over to here, 
then either we can move left immediately, in which case we're in the same problem scheme as we are before, or we move right, in which case we're gonna do that forever anyway. So you can actually show that this acquiring new memory is completely useless to this particular model. And it turns out that those things are what are called two-way deterministic automata, which means that they're just DFAs, except you can move left and right. And you can show a video forthcoming that those are the regular languages, which is pretty cool. It's a quite tricky proof, but I'm gonna give all of the details in an upcoming video about it. And note what we were saying earlier, that acquiring new memory is completely useless for this particular model. So this answer is gonna be identical to the previous one. So then now let's think about when we can move left and right, we can read and write cells and we can acquire new memory, that's what a Turing machine is. And so those are the recognizable languages. And let's think about this one. If we can move left and right, and we can read and write cells, but we can't acquire new memory, those are recognized by linear bounded automata because you can't acquire new memory, and those are the context-sensitive languages, which are strictly less powerful than the Turing machines. So, out of all eight possibilities, only one of them was something related to Turing machines. So in some sense, all three of these different behaviors have to work in tandem in order to get these particular languages. Although it's not completely true because six of these are regular and the one that's not a Turing machine or regular is something in the middle because of this ability to acquire new memory. So in some sense, we only needed really these two to work together to get something more powerful than the regular languages. So the ability to acquire new memory is just only distinguishing between two different levels that are above regular languages, which I think is pretty cool to do a short little exercise like this because it really makes you think about why Turing machines are more powerful than DFAs. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave thoughts about this particular table in the comments down below. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. That was easy. That was easy. That was easy.